Good evening. I Rapstein with your Spider ETF stock market wrap up, and this wrap up is for Thursday, the 28th of September, 2023. You know, I want you to do me a favor. I'm going to be replacing our BND, and maybe you have an idea what you'd like me to cover. Don't give me something that's got such small volume or outstanding shares that most of us don't look at it. All right. I had some people do that, and I, I want to be nice about it, but I, I need things that are different than that. So just write me here on the channel, tell me what you think, and I promise you I'll consider doing it. I have one I'm looking at because I'm, I'm pissed at Walgreens, and if I do it, it's because I'm pissed. Their service is absolutely terrible. I've had two instances where I've tried to get my COVID shot. One time, oh, we don't have a pharmacist on duty. They take appointments. They don't write you and say they don't have a pharmacist. They, then they send you an email to show up in the morning. Second time, by the way, you wait 30 minutes in line. Next one, I show up. This was Saturday. Wait 30 minutes again. Oh, we're out. This was at noon, right after the lunch breaks over at 12, 15. I go, again, you can't write and tell people. So they don't know what they're doing with customer service. So as I see these companies flounder in what they're doing, it's because management's got their head up, you know what? We have better things to do than stand in lines once I get it, there's something. And you know what the staff told me? We're understaffed. I called corporate office. You know what they told me there? Oh, just make another appointment. This is the stupidity that goes on. And it happened to me. All right. So not hearsay. I'm pissed. All righty. I hope they have records of it because my call went in. So now what do we do as we look at the markets? Here's where I think we're at. I think we're at a point where the market is praying, hoping, crossing fingers, lighting candles, all that, that we can get both the, the House and the Senate together. First, you got to get the House to agree to whatever they're going to agree to, uh, to get to the Senate. And everybody gets together and we'll get a quick end to the threat of a shutdown. I happen to think we're going to see a shutdown. I think it benefits in its own crazy way the Republicans. First, everybody's mad at them. But if they can get something done on the border, they salvage something very good. Get money, get that border shut down in some manner, get people on it, whatever you have to do. If you can't do that and you're shutting the government down and you're just going to release it to open, you, you lose the day. So there, there's a win that could happen here. Um, I thought it was a farce, the debate last night, uh, as I was watching all the candidates, everybody wants their nine minutes of fame and who gets more time and how do I butt in, you know, and this is without Trump. So it was, it was sort of funny. So today I'm looking at the market and saying, you know, it, it feels like the market, and I have to use that word feels, we might get a short covering rally, traders praying and hoping that they'll get something going and we're oversold. Nothing goes straight down forever. So bounces happen. But when it's all said and done, even when we get into the, and we will, even when we get into a settlement for 30 or 45 days where Congress tries to get together and do things, um, you haven't solved anything. You just reopen the government. Tell me what you've solved. If you can get some money at the border, that's a good thing, but you haven't solved anything. And the first reaction would be, and I was thinking about it, probably short covering, and then reality will set in and the market will go, what do you do? If you haven't watched CNBC today, late in the day, you want to. They're, they had on Bill Ackman of uh, Pershing. Great interview. Uh, you know, he's betting the ranch that interest rates are going substantially higher than they are right now. At a minimum, he thinks the 30-year uh, bond will be at 5%, and he thinks that... Uh, the, the middle tiers are all going a lot higher than that, obviously. Watch it, see why. He explains his ideas. Another point in, in there, but a good point, and he's, he's very articulate. So in looking at this, you came down, you made the lowest low, and you got a bounce. I get it. Why not? Where was the market? You'll see this in a minute. The trend is certainly down. You can't argue the fact that you have lower highs, lower lows all the way down. You can't argue that you're not under the 18-day average of closes. So the bias is down, as I define bias. My definition is simple. 
when you're under the 18 day average, I have a bearish bias. And that means I'm not looking for signals to go long. You can cover shorts, but not signals to go long. And when I'm over it, I'm not looking for signals to go short. I'm looking for signals to go long. When you get back under it, I flip flop. It's a filter. I call it a master filter. But when you start running the Bollinger Band like you're doing here, you can only push it so long so far before you're gonna to move to the right-hand side, and that's what you're doing. But moving to the right-hand side initially gets sold. I don't believe, in my experience, that traders' pros sell under Bollinger Bands because the theory's all wrong. 95% of the time, the algorithm is designed to, at 95% of the time, keep prices within the bands. If that's the case and you start selling outside of the bands, means 95% of the time you don't have to. What can happen is you're waiting to sell the other side of the band and the market just hugs that and doesn't give you a spot. So what? There's always another trade. So you wait for the situations to come your way. Rivian. Rivian's interesting here. You know I've been looking for a reason to play the long side. I keep mentioning it. Should we take out Wednesday's high? Wednesday's high, not today. That's the first sign that we would have higher lows and higher highs. As long as you didn't get back under after you do it, whatever the low is. If the low first takes out, for example, doesn't take that out, takes out this low, it's an expanding low. When that happens, you still gotta be able to close over the 18 day average, and all you're opening yourself up for is the upper band, which is 24.81, so it's about $1.90 that maybe it can get to there. Could it fail right here? Absolutely. This is what you call a trade right on the cusp. Which way does it wanna go? And that's why it's fighting at that 18 day average of closes. In the gasoline, I'm not looking for much more than the downside here, you're already oversold. Trend down, but I think you're late in the game. XLF, we had how many days under the Bollinger Band? This is that situation where I tell you, I don't want you selling under Bollinger Band. By the way, you have to listen to me at all. I'm not managing your money. But if you take a look, you were under it here, 33.24 to 28. The day before, that's day two under it. But where are you under it right here? you closed at 74 to 21. So you always do your counts. You only had two days under. And that's typical in a bear market. You'll get a few under, then you move right and so on like you're doing. You're not embedded. You're an oversold market that acts to me like it wants to come up, but why ride that out to let it come against you? It either embeds and when it's oversold and you get a bounce like that, I just tell traders you walk away for a little bit and we'll come in later. I'm certainly not bullish. XLI, I'm in the bear camp. Are you gonna lose the embedded reading? Tomorrow, you made your first challenge today of the 200 day average. Do I tell traders, and you, you've watched me, and if you're a subscriber, you know that I don't believe in selling the first challenge of a main moving average when you come to it. What are the main averages? Certainly the 200 and the 100. I don't consider the 50 day a main average. It's an intermediate average. It's okay for times to look at it. Is it gonna work or not? Generally, these are much more important. You'll always hear me say, ah, there's the first test of the 100 and the Bollinger Band. I think the pros are coming out. But if it embeds, then I'm looking for another level. And if there's something under it, I'd say it right here. Well, I'm not. Even if you got out there, what did you give up? Not too much. If you lose the embedded reading, I think you'll go back to wherever that 18 day average is and we regroup and see what the market's gonna offer. Disney, very oversold, doesn't act like it wants to get to that band, be very careful in this market right here. This is a darling of a lot of people uh, over time. It's been a great company, they got great management, they're in a rough patch. I get it, I understand it. RSP, this is the consumer. So. Is the consumer tapped out or not? Tomorrow we're gonna to get some price indexes. We're gonna see consumer spending. You, you saw the reports that I've got out there. I'm gonna bring them up one more time. Let me bring this right here. 
the government's going to be looking at the PCE, not the government, the traders are going to be looking at the PCE price index. They want to see what you're spending. This is all going to be important. You got then the Chicago uh, September PMI coming out. We got University of Michigan. Now, you're not going to get government reports again if they go into the, uh, the shutdown mode. What happens then, let me get back to where I have to be here for you. Here we go. They, they, what happens is they have to shut everything down. And it's, it, even if they shut down 24 hours, it throws everything off. Then they'll say, we need a few days to catch up. I've been through this. So I can only tell you what my experience has been, not what will happen. That I can tell you. Maybe they're magically different this time around because you don't get shutdowns that often. But typically what happens, you don't get a report. They'll miss the report. They'll come catch up with it on next report and or they could set up the report later. They rarely do. They, they try to stick with schedules. So just be aware of that. That's why what we're going to do for you at the end of this helps a lot. And I'll explain that to you in, in a bit here. But as long as you have the embedded reading, nah, until it's lost, the traders will use a rally here to try to get short. Now, you've crossed over in everything. You got now the 18 under the 200, but I'd like to get to really be bearish, even worse than this, get the 100 day under the two. You get them lined up and then the classic uh, moving average guys come out and go, that's a bear market configuration if I've ever seen one. In uh, the home builders, Embedded, that means I'm still in the bear camp very much so. I look tomorrow for the 18-day average to hit the 100, and if it gets under it, you still might be coming down. Have you taken a look to see how many homes are selling? The numbers are crashing. You've got mortgages at 767. I mean, it's insane, all right? People are just putting their hands in their pocket. I know in Chicago, the market's come to a halt. And people are just sitting and going, you know, I'll wait for the spring. I, I know that sounds crazy because here we are, we're just leaving summer in the fall, right? But wintertime in Chicago, not the easiest time to sell things, right? If, it, if our winters stay mild like they were last year, yeah, then you can put them up for sale. But you're betting on what Mother Nature may or may not do. Energy sector still bullish. Now, I don't like what I'm hearing. I'm hearing some talk that maybe OPEC's getting tired of this uh, extension and they want to increase production a little bit uh, when this runs out early next year. But that's next year. They've already said that they're going to do this. Last I read, I think we got through December. You can write me if I'm wrong in that. I think they said that. So we'll see. Uh, certainly October, I, I know that. That was going to happen. Now the question is, where are they going to come back? They've got this working their direction. Why, why change it? They don't want to kill the goose, so you don't want prices up at $110, $120 right now. But you're not there. You're not even at 95 in Brent. The game's going their way. Why change anything? In the gold market, breaking down, as you can see, and let's face it, you, you can go to your banker. You can go to your brokerage firm, you know, your stock firm. You can get five and a quarter, five and a half percent without knowing anybody, without doing very much. It's pretty easy. Why do you need to own gold? Now, the reason is, and I will give you that, it, at five, five and a quarter, if inflation's running three and a half to four percent, you're making one percent on your money, maybe a little bit more. It's not like you're getting rich. You're going to say, well, but this is really my storage of value and so on, but it's not paying you any interest. So you're even worse behind when you put your money there, you're getting absolutely nothing against it right now. SLV, this is a short cover area. As far as I'm concerned, I think the pros should be out of that market. Copper, not embedded, hit the Bollinger Band. For my money, bye-bye. I, I think the, the pros are out of the, their shorts there. TLT, still short. BND, still short. Just running these bands, and until they stop, that's when you come out. If the dollar, the red line closes under 21, what do you have to, I'm sorry, under 79, thinking the other way, under 79, then to me, you've lost the upside and it's time for the correction. How deep, I can't tell you, but I don't expect it to be 
big one. But I would not want to hang on the long positions if that happens. Doesn't mean I'm right, by the way. And I'm not guiding your money anyways. Um, and in looking at the market right here, if you close over 21, I told you my brain's too fast. Then I don't want to be short anymore. So you're right at a cusp. Which way do we go with all this? Tomorrow's a very, very big, important trade day. You put it together, you come up with game plan. And that's where we want to step in. You know, I know that many of you watch all the time what we're doing here because I'm covering markets that are based on futures. D-I-A-I-W-M, G-L-D, S-L-V, the energies, I can go on and on. Why not get a commodity newsletter when you lose all that that tells you what's going on? We cover options, the cash market, the futures markets in our reports here. Charts, projections, why, fundamentals and technical analysis, a lot of it. And we write these all day long, so it's not like some firms all oh, send you one at the beginning of the day, end of the day. Now they're updating them throughout the day because they know you want the information. Do you need it? That's up to you. You know, that part I can't tell you. Should you want it? Yeah. How do you get it? It's free to give it a try. And by the way, it's for our subscribers after that. How do you get this? irapstein.com, free offers. Move your cursor up here. You'll see an icon go there, free offers. And if you have questions, just call my staff. They'll talk to you. I'm Ira. You have a great day. I'll talk to you first thing in the morning in the subscriber video. And after that, of course, you'll get my morning flash. Take care.